I asked my daycare, do you have a policy for air quality? And they said, well, actually we don't. And a lot of the places were using a seven, which is unhealthy for the general population as the cutoff for kids. But the research shows that kids are much more sensitive. And even in that moderate range, this can have long-term health consequences for children and developing lungs. So that led me to team up with Dr. Ann Hicks, who's a pediatric respirologist at the University of Alberta. And we said, okay, there's a gap here. We want to be able to communicate to childcare centers, in this case, daycares, but also it applies to schools, to the general population and say, children are more vulnerable. When we're thinking about looking at air quality, we've got to consider they are more sensitive to even lower levels of pollution. And then realizing that our federal continuous air quality monitoring stations kind of few and far between, right? They're not covering that nitty gritty detail in your neighborhoods that we can see on purple air. There are real variations that studies have shown that there's real variations. And so we wanted them to use a protocol that told them to look at both together because from the continuous monitoring stations, they're getting a three hour average. Purple air, you can do real time monitoring.